fix errors, waste, and issues in a couple of clicks. Get alerted whenever you're off track. Sign up at trueclicks.com. Wix Studio, the platform for agencies and enterprises to manage clients and projects with max efficiency. Sharing Wix's SEO tech to help you drive growth. Thank you. Um, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for the welcome. Um, yeah, I'm um, head of SEO, uh, Wavemaker. I've been a Wavemaker for about 13 years, but I worked in the industry for about, um, well, over 20 years. I'm going to share some thoughts with you today about how you can create a real killer content strategy. So we consume content at an incredible rate today. Uh, we search, we scroll, we've got personalization, we've got AI. And here's a, a question or a thought for you. In this new world, we have this, this AI revolution. Do we still have a role anymore? Do, do we, the humans, have a role in creating content and in content strategies? And if we do, how does that play out in the things that we know are important to Google around demonstrating experience, demonstrating expertise, that authority and that trust? And I love stats, I love facts. And here's a fact for you. We spend about six hours and nine minutes a day consuming content. Six hours, that's a lot of time. And in that content, it, it inspires, it informs, it educates, it transacts and it moves us to purchase. So at this stage in history, we're creating more content than we ever have done before. And I believe we're at a significant point in the evolution of search as well. Uh, if you look at where we are today, we have advanced algorithms that are evaluating and rewarding content. And the face of the search results is changing significantly. We've um, at the most disruptive part of, of search we've probably had in over a decade. Uh, artificial intelligence has created these opportunities for, for brands, for marketeers to create content at a scale and at a pace and a quality that has been beyond the human for the first time. It's one where, as an industry, we're excited about and incredibly uh, quick to be early adopters. But this is not a new story. AI in search and AI with Google and that content story isn't something new. So let's have a little look at where that story began. Um, there's been a massive hype about AI over the last 12 months. If we look back to 2014, Google acquired um, a company called DeepMind, innovative AI startup ran by Dennis Habes, paid $500 million for that business to bring machine learning and AI into the search results. The following year in 2015, it brought rank brain into the, into our, into the algorithm. The point of that is to become more human in the way it interacts with us. And then let's fast forward to here, to 2023 and 24. We've got search generative experience, we've got chat GPT. We've got an incredible explosion of AI tools. So AI being used for content creation is weaving its way into the fabric of what we do in our daily lives. Um, but this is a really interesting uh, statistic from Gartner. By 2025, that's less than 12 months away, they estimate 30% of all marketing messages and content will be synthetically generated. 30% in less than 12 months. That's a staggering rate of adoption. So, okay, hang on. I'm talking to a room of SEOs here, aren't I? Let's, let's just pause for a second before we go off and create a thousand pages in a day. I'm sure from some of the talks I went to yesterday, people have probably already done that. Um, and anybody who's worked in the industry as long as I have, they might remember things like article spinning. So we're not going back to those dark days. Um, but look, as a group of digital marketers and SEOs, we are quick to adopt uh, these AI technologies and it has created the floodgates for, uh, to, to create content. Again, at a scale and a quality uh, at a pace we've never seen before. But let's have a look what Google says, shall we? Let's take some advice from, from where it matters. And Google says, focus on, on the quality of the content, not how it's being produced. So the quality of the content. So in that case, let's see if we can create maybe 2000 pages by tomorrow using AI. Um, but hang on, what happened last month? 
Google's helpful content update, Google said, we're going to tackle spam. We're going to tackle unhelpful, unuseful content. We're going to focus on that low quality automated content created for search engines. And by doing that, we took 40% of this spam content out of the index. But Google said something which is not new. He said, if you're creating content, focus on your audience first. Real people not creating content for search engines. So where does this leave us? How do we take all this, this advancements in AI and how do we develop a killer content strategy? Well, the first step, again, is very simple. Let's look at how we can understand your audience. Use first party data, use third party data, use multiple tools to get that rounded view of your audience. Then look at how do they search? How do they search around the brand? How do they search around the products? How do they search around the brand plus the products and all the topics around that? But not just how do they search around that, how do they physically search? Do they talk? Do they type? Because this could vary in the types of questions they're asking. And where do they search? If you look at younger audiences these days, they don't start in Google. They're in social platforms like TikTok or peer-to-peer -peer platforms like Reddit. So we use Google as a backstop because we're SEOs, but start to expand out your that knowledge base to get a, a wider understanding. And this is the wave maker process. This is our way of uh, creating a content strategy. We take all that rich content um, data we have from understanding the audience. We bring it in, we model the intent. We look at the competitors in the market. We map it to existing pages. We create new pages. And then we will look to evaluate the impact of it, then continue to look to optimize. And there's been other talks about content strategies over the last sort of 24 hours here at Brighton and some brilliant talks. But well, the one thing I've not heard mentioned yet is about the people or the person behind the content, who is writing that content. So Google has its quality rater guidelines. It's a 168 page document, a little bit of like bedtime reading. And in that it mentions the word author and authorship 78 times. So if it mentions it 78 times, is that a signal that the person or the people behind the content is important? Let's delve a little bit deeper into those quality rated guidelines. They talk about having high levels of trust, having a positive reputation of the content creator on the topic or the subject matter. They should demonstrate personal experience and they should justify and prove why they are classed as an expert. So these are incredibly important signals, especially in your money or life sectors. So Google is looking for signals in your content around the, the human aspect, especially in your highest value content. It's looking for demonstrating experience, demonstrating expertise, why are they an authority and why can they be trusted? And the simplest way to think about it is this. This is an AI generated image of a breakfast sofa. If the BBC and their other media allies are available, contacted you tomorrow, contacted your business and said, we want an expert to sit on, well, the real BBC sofa, not this one, this is AI. Who would you send? What experts do you have in your business that could answer the question to the level like that? I believe that's what Google's looking for, for the signals in the content. Um, so in your money, your life sectors, I believe it's why is the author of your content an expert? What is their digital footprint in that ecosystem? And can we trust the advice and the experience that they're demonstrating within that content? So let's have a look at some examples. Here's an example. Um, it clearly shows on the page of this author of the content the name. In the bio, it says how famous, how reputable, it gives you details that make them stand out and you would say they're an, an expert. It has links at the bottom to content they're writing within their website, but also external links beyond the page. And here's another example. Instead of just that was the author bio, this is a specific page that they've authored. You can see the name, the publish date, links through to the author. But what you can't see is also signposts you can send to Google. 
There are signposts around schema, putting an article schema or person schema, so Google knows that this is an expert within that page. So how do we go about analyzing the authors and how do we go about building the fame of those authors as well? Well, it's quite simple. If you have authors of your content within your business, type their name into Google and then type their name into Google again plus the topic. Type their name into Google again plus the topic or a brand. Type their name into Google plus their topic or a brand or publications. If they start to get things like in this example, a knowledge panel, you start to see more content they're producing. It's a brilliant sign and a brilliant signal that they're a higher trusted authority on that subject. But then how do you go about benchmarking how good your authors are versus those in the market, your competitors? Quite simply, just go through and have a look at the number of pages where they have an author on them and then start to look at the number of authors and the bios and the published dates. Check against the competitors to see if they've got schema on. Quite simple little checks that you can put in place. Once you've got all that, because you're looking at the pages, let's check and see if we can analyze against the person. You know, we can crawl the sites, we can baseline benchmark, we can look at the relevancy, um, we can ask simple questions like, do they have a significant social footprint? Um, do they feature on tier one publications where they're writing? Do they have a knowledge panel if you search for them by name? Uh, and you could also go to tools like Muckrack and type in their name or type in topics to see if they appear and then we can get an overall rating. And then the next thing is once we've got all that information, how do we improve the signals on our own content? Well, here's a really simple thing. You know, create a section of your website that says authors for a start, um, put the name in the URL, uh, create clear uh, bios on their page, put links to content that they've authored within your website, but also key links to content that they've authored outside of your website to create that ecosystem. And as I mentioned earlier, there's, there's things that you can do with the code uh, in terms of scheme, in terms of person scheme, in terms of article schema, to signpost to Google that these guys are an expert. So the next consideration is um, you should think beyond SEO here. Um, Google is looking for experts in your field, specialists. You know, you need to look at PRing, from your PR strategy, you need to look at PRing the person, not just the brand. You know, if you have experts in your business, you need to elevate and raise their fame within your business. Remember, the aim of this is to get them on that real BBC breakfast news sofa, not the air one. Um, and then another consideration is the person's fame. The more you're raising the profile of that person and creating this bigger ecosystem across social and across content, what happens if that person starts to say anything in any of these platforms that's deflammatory? You're using this author to help you as an expert within your business, but actually those negative signals could have a negative impact. So you need to think about that. And maybe that even comes into more HR strategy than SEO strategy. And what happens if you don't have these types of people within your business? Then what do you do? It's quite simply, there are some tools available in the market. You can use tools like Ahrefs or Muckrack. You can go in there and type a topic. You'll get a list of different authors. How you go out and contact them, how you go out and bring them in under license, that, that's a different question than possibly for, for another talk. Um, but one warning, if you do bring expert authors in under license, um, think about the IP of the content. If this is helping your business and your rankings and the performance, who owns that content and for how long? If you bring it in an author, do you own the content outright forever? Or is that content just available for a period of time? If it's just available for a period of time, what happens when you remove that author's name from your content? Will that impact your performance? So I've got three learnings and takeaways to, to, to leave you with and to take today, hopefully. Um, the first one is Look, AI is fantastic. It's revolutionizing our industry. It's creating opportunities, as we've mentioned, to create content at a pace and a scale that is beyond the human. But think about the audience first. Think about that real person. Why are you creating that content? It's for the person, not the search engine. And next, if you do have authors in your business, it can take time to create fame. It can create time to, to to make them experts. So you can bring experts in under, under license. 
And finally, especially in um, highly competitive sectors like your money or life sectors, um, you need to think of the humans. All these signals we're doing is so you can demonstrate experience in the content, makes them stand out as an expert. They're seen as an authority and they can be trusted. So as, as I mentioned at the beginning, I've worked in, in SEO for over 20 years and I've worked in some of the most competitive verticals. I've worked in finance, um, I've worked in um, uh, insurance and travel and, and gaming. And in these verticals, taking this sort of approach has created marginal gains and created content strategies that will win. So I believe as a, a kind of a final thought to, to leave you with is with the rise of AI and to, to generate content, I don't believe it's the AI that's important. I believe it's the HI, the human intelligence signals that Google is looking for in your content to reward it and to win. Thank you. Okay. Demand sphere. Limitless visual insights from the SERPs. Unlimited dashboards and users. Easy to use and easy to scale your growth to new levels. Monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools.